All right. So we got uh, the uh, the one, the only, the pedicab guy around here in, in Austin, Texas, who's just bringing people and trying to onboard them with Bitcoin. And uh, you you were just riding around. I got a little whiff of uh, what, what you're smelling right now, man. You, you've been riding the pedicab all around Austin today or what? Yeah, sorry, dude. You know, nah, yeah. <laughs> just giving you a hard time. Actually, I, I was funny. I was just giving a tour and I got done with it. So Yeah, great stuff. So, yeah. all right. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, kind of what you're doing in the space. And, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a pedicab driver. Driver, um, you know, I was really lucky in that I spent a lot of my like unemployment money on Bitcoin, um, and you know, I, I did this because I had I had my first roommate in college. He um, works at a bank on Wall Street. Okay, and you know, I started like learning about like um, you know basic investing. I'd like read books here and there, like um, go on like Yahoo Finance and just like you know try to like learn about what like what was on a company's balance sheet or just figure out like what I was going to do with like, so basically like for a year prior to COVID, I would just put like some money into like a Robinhood account, not really knowing what was going on. And actually I was putting money into like the volatility end index because I figured like, Oh, everything's going to totally implode. And I pulled it out like too soon. Um, and you know, then everything started closing and I was like, just kind of really scared and frustrated. Cause like, I'm, I didn't know if I was going to work or what was going to happen. It was a busy time of the year. Um, I had like a family account. I bought like all these like tech stocks and I saw everything like crashing. And so I was like really freaking out and I didn't know what to do. And, um, my roommate who I still stay in touch with my freshman year roommate just told me, Hey, dude, just, just buy Bitcoin. When you get your unemployment, you'll get your unemployment, put that money into Bitcoin. Um, and I didn't know really like, you know, I knew about Bitcoin. I knew what it was, right? Like, I think I bought an Ethereum like three years prior and just had it sitting there. Um, and so I just listened to him because I trusted him and I had other like friends that I like knew from like jujitsu and MMA that were like kind of saying the same thing, you know, that had like finance degrees and stuff like that, that understood what to do. And so I said, okay, fine. I'll just put like, you know, half of my unemployment, like every, every, every time I get, it, I'll just put it into like Coinbase and just buy Bitcoin with it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, all of a sudden, like, you know, seven, eight months pass. And like the, the, the 5,000 or $6,000 that I put into Bitcoin, all of a sudden, like, became worth a lot more. <laughs> and I, and, and then I went from being like broke to being middle class and I was just floored by it. Right. Like I didn't, under, I, I, I never saw that kind of money, like in my own account, like ever in my life. Right. And, um, you know, I kind of made the mistake of like selling a, a lot of it when it like in what February or something like that of 2021. Uh, and I was lucky cause I sold, you know, some of it, a lot of it at a high price. Right. And I started trying to like buy some of it back in, but as things were kind of crashing, um, with the Elon tweet, I just started like following a bunch of Bitcoin accounts and, you know, I was watching like the best business show and I was like listening to people like Dylan LeClaire and like Will Clemente talk and trying to like figure out what like the unchained data meant. And then someone told me to read the Bitcoin standard and I started reading it and I just started like actually, um, so then, then you yeah, went down yeah, the rabbit yeah. hole. Yeah, so I started like learning, 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 learning more about like why Bitcoin was valuable. Because I thought that like, you know, um, Bitcoin and crypto, they all like every cryptocurrency would just have its own little unique purpose. And it was just like a really cool way to revolutionize money. And um, I had that belief and thought for a while. And then once like S once the, the SBF stuff started happening and FTX started like imploding and collapsing, and then you saw the fact that a lot of these coins were basically worth nothing. And you saw what happened with Luna and you saw people just being able to dilute their own supply and whatever it is. Um, you just saw, you like saw a very, very clear and distinct difference between um, Bitcoin and these other cryptocurrencies. Because I thought it was all the same because I'm like, oh, you get to take control over your own finances, you know, and the supply is less than the US dollar. And like, maybe, I don't know, you could use some Ethereum to buy an NFT in the metaverse if, you, if companies start, you know, so I started, I was like thinking that there might be a value proposition for these other coins, but then you see FTX and you see like Luna collapse, you see all this stuff collapse and um, any, any um, crypto project or company that has a CEO can very easily do the same thing. And the only, um, the only, the only, the only um, thing that can't do that is Bitcoin because it doesn't have a CEO or a board of directors and you know all the decisions are made by the majority of node operators and it's really easy to run a node because of the block size and it's uh really difficult to um make it to to complete a transaction because of the energy that that's required and the the energy gets harder and harder you know it gets more and more energy intensive because of how it's mined 
and the code cannot be the code has to be changed by like a majority of node operators and it's almost impossible to change the code and if you actually got to a point where you started changing the code um the mining equipment and everything else associated with with bitcoin would get super expensive and nobody's going to spend that kind of money on on these things unless they want to turn a high profit and then the price would be skyrocketing anyway so like worst case scenario you're still going to make a lot of money from this best case scenario you revolutionize how money works Oh uh, yeah. I mean, that's, and it, it, it's, <laughs> that I mean, that was awesome. Dude. That was awesome. But I mean, it, I think it's interesting too, cause you got into it initially for a number go up, which I think a lot of people did, you know, I mean, that's, that's no fault to you or anything like that. But then, you know, once you kind of see that number go up, that's when you're like, okay, what the hell am I actually investing in? When we were kind of talking a little bit uh, pre-show, but when I first met you, it's like, you know, it kind of gets to the point where it's like, okay, once you understand and you go down that rabbit hole of Bitcoin, you don't need to necessarily go in like research a company's 10 K figure out, you know, is this company profitable? Is it got like a good, you know, uh, how's the market cap? What's the price to earnings? Like all these different metrics on to what, you know, you could potentially make money on in a stock or something along those lines. Instead, you just know, you know, you understand the Bitcoin's hard money principles. You understand all the things that you just outlined and you just make it easier on yourself, man. You just DCA in. And it, it's probably like, you know, made a lot less stress on your life and, and allowed you to kind of just focus on other things, other aspects of your life. Maybe it's making more money or maybe it's, uh, you well, know, it's just like, yeah, or, or just doing podcast episodes. Yeah. I'm giving pedicab rides. You know, I started like speaking at city council meetings. Yeah. So, you know, trolling, awesome, gov so. trolling government meetings. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you get to focus more on your art projects and it's just a better way to do things. Right. Uh, because like investing is a full-time job. Like if you really want to be like an, I like the people that like make insane amounts of money, trading stocks and options and doing all that stuff. Like, you have to be really in tune with what's going on in fiat clown world, literally all the time. Like, like that's your life, you know, yeah. and you got to figure out like, oh, the Fed's having a meeting tomorrow. You know, you know how much I care about the um, CPI report? Yeah, I know. And that's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, too. but a lot of people on Wall Street really care. It's a big deal. People are actually nervous about this report coming out. Oh, well, 100%. You know? Or I mean the PPI report. But for me, I could care less about this because... If you get a good report, if you get a like a low number, all right, cool. I guess the Bitcoin I own is going to go up in value uh, because I'll anticipate like a rate hike pause, a rate hike pause. And if it's a bad report and the inflation is hotter, well, uh, I guess I'm just going to buy more cheaper Bitcoin during South by Southwest when all these tech nerds are in town. So either way, like I, I don't care, and that's like a really cool feeling to like to to have, right? When you're like in your mid 30s and you know you like own a house and like you know you have like a small business and and you know you're you're like, I'm not going to say thriving, but you're like staying afloat while everybody seems to be sinking. And that's cool. Yeah. hundred percent. And I mean, I, I think, yeah, I mean, exactly like you said, right. I mean, the, the difficult part where I think like we we've, we've kind of gotten into is that the average person has had to basically understand more about their own finances to maintain middle-class, right? If you want to live you know, if you have some nine to five job and you want to live, I don't know, a little bit more comfortably than just like paycheck to paycheck, maybe you're investing or whatnot. Like these people are taking their free time at night, whatever it is, not really going on dates or hanging out with their girlfriend or whatever, maybe neglecting family or whatever to learn about these companies, 10 Ks or whatever it is. And so the quality, I think, of people's life has kind of gone it's kind down. Of, well, the quality of life goes down with inflation anyway. And look, I don't know yeah. too many people that are going to spend their free time reading 10 Ks yeah. and, and learning about balance sheets because if, if that were the case, they probably wouldn't be struggling as much. Yeah, but right. It, like you'd yeah. still be at least keeping up. You wouldn't be doing as well as somebody that's been DCAing into like Bitcoin for the past 10 years, but you'd still be doing you'd, you'd still be doing fine, right? Like it would still be a strategy that you, you would say is continuing to work for you. Um, but I mean, over time, like when eggs are nine dollars uh, uh what's it called? Nine dollars a dozen or something like that, and it's like you know, it's gonna cost you like twenty dollars to buy a whole organic chicken, which is pretty much where we're almost at. Um and gas is co costing five dollars a gallon, and you know your um your your rent has all of a sudden gone up by twenty five percent if you don't own your own home. Well, like, cool. Now you have less money to actually invest in these stocks to keep up with inflation. Whereas if you just have your money in better money, and you're not living a life based off of debt, because a lot of people too they live off of debt. Like you got oh, these guys at South by Southwest, they got these six figure salaries. You know what I mean? But they have to live in the trendy apartment. 
You know, they have 300 K mm. worth or 200 K worth of student loan debt and grad student debt. Um, they got to buy this. They got to buy the new vehicle that has, you know, they got to, they got to buy the new BMW that costs uh, yeah. 50 grand or and they got that they have to make payments on, you know, um, or to get that job that they had, they had to go spend $200,000, right. At some school, right. Yeah. I mean, that's what I said. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you did all of this and then, I don't know. Now, now you got to take your wife to the fancy dinner, yeah. right? Now you got to buy like this nice furniture for the house. Like now you have to, um, now you have to buy these, the, the designer clothing to like fit in and get your promotion at work. And guess what happens when you get your promotion? Now you just have to spend more money to like, um, maintain, to continue maintaining an even more superior version of this image. And your money's also losing value because it's totally elastic and based on nothing. So, you know, um, that being said, eventually you just don't have money to invest in the companies. And so, uh, you know, one day the, the, the dominoes fall and the balloon pops and a lot of people are going to be left with their pants down oh, and they're going to have no idea what to do. And I could, and honestly, I could be one of those people, but like, I don't know yet. Right. But I'm, I'm just, um, doing what I think is like the best solution for, um, for what's happening, but a lot of these people are, are going through life sleepwalking, thinking everything's okay, thinking that, oh yeah, well, the jobs report is really good. Joe Biden's great. We're going to be fantastic. You know, this is, uh, they're not thinking about anything or they're protesting the wrong things. You know, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're going to the establishment sanctioned protests. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, hundred uh, percent. so, you know, the more, the, the more you're sleepwalking through life, the more you're going to need the central bank digital currency when your bank collapses, right? The more you're going to need to have a universal income when the tech, when your tech company eventually lays you off because they have to cut costs, right? Because now, now the interest rates are what, like five, five, now the federal fund rates, like what, 5% or something mm -hmm. like that. Like now, you know, you can't just get cheap loans. Now you can't just spend a bunch of money on research and development that, um, you don't even know if, if it's going to help your company in any capacity, but, um, it'll help your stock price go up. So now you can profit from it and then you can still hire people on staff and then they can go buy the, you know, buy the new iPhones and buy the new goods. Like eventually that, that dom eventually that domino will, will collapse. Um, and a lot of people are just going to be caught totally with their pants down because you had two years during this COVID and during these lockdowns to like really wake up and figure out that something is extremely wrong. Like you could have known this during the financial crisis, but a lot of people didn't, didn't really wake up to, to that. Right. Um, or you just got out of college, you didn't really understand what was going on. But during COVID, when you're at home for two years, oh, 100%. if you're not, if you didn't take the time to like learn and figure out like, you know, how this system is inherently broken and you're not trying to like to fix it. And I mean, honestly, you're not even going to fix a system. The more you realize how broken the system is, you realize it's beyond fixing. And the only thing you should fix is yourself. And that's why, you know, if you have self custody of your own money and you're buying the and, and you're buying, and you're using the money with the fixed supply that's based on energy production. Well, you're not going to change the world, but you know, the, uh, <laughs> your world will be a lot better. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I know. And like hundred percent, dude. I mean, I, I think that's the biggest thing, right? I mean, is that your world is going to be better. So, I mean, what is that? Like that root of all that? It's just taking ownership. Right. And I mean, that's what Bitcoin really promotes. Right. I mean, like self custody, kind of uh, not relying on any third party. Right. I mean, it, if you have your Bitcoin on exchange right now, like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I mean, we've I have, seen, some. Yeah. I have some on cash. App. Well, I mean, of course, like, I, I think the average person probably has some here or there. Right. I mean, whether it's for spending or other things like that, but, you know, majority of your stack, whatever you can do, if you can minimize that third party risk, that third party counterparty risk or whatever it is you should be doing it right now. I mean, we're seeing obviously the bank run going on right now where people are losing money in their bank accounts. We've seen situations in the Canadian truckers convoy where bank accounts have gotten frozen yes. and accounts have gotten seized, right? I mean, so there's so many different avenues that we've seen over the past two years alone that are making the case for Bitcoin. It's just absolutely insane where how people aren't even waking up to the fact that all this shit's hitting the fan. Like, right, we have this Fiat Ponzi that's just kind of like kicking the can down the road, kicking the can down the road. Well, the road's going to end eventually, right? I mean, we're going to have to find to come to an impasse where it's either going to be, you know, a, some sort of transition into, you know, Bitcoin or some sort of, you know, hard money principle type area, or they're just going to print this shit into oblivion where they're just going to keep printing, printing, printing until like, you know, maybe it's our kids or our grandkids or something that are going to be really, you know, just, just suffering from all this. So, you know, on that note with, 
with what you're doing, I think is super interesting because I mean, obviously we're, we're in our Austin, Texas, one of the meccas for, for Bitcoin alone, but you're, you're also doing the pedicab business. So which, which I think is interesting. So why don't you kind of get into, to what you're doing with that and like the podcast and all that. Kind oh of stuff. yeah. Well, like, so I drive a, a pedicab, which is basically like an adult tricycle. <laughs> Um, it's an adult tricycle, and, it's, with, and those are huge in Austin. They're the best. Yeah, they, they they are the best. I like drive a clown car and like you know can people love live that shit. pretty comfortably, right? It's yeah. cool. I'm happy, and I'm also don't live off of debt. Like I got no student loans. Um, my cars, I don't buy new cars. I only buy used cars, right? Um, uh, I was lucky. I bought my house in January of 22 when the interest interest rates were still low. Uh, really lo- like really lucky in, in that department. So yeah, you know, things are more expensive now, but it, it's going to plateau, right? Mm-hmm. You know, things went from here, like things went from here to here, but now they're going to just stay there. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I was going to rent, it would maybe go here to here to here. Yeah. To the here. kind of stair step. Right? Yeah. You, and, 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 um, it would just keep going up with no chance of things ever going back to normal. And then it would be almost impossible to buy a house, even though the cost is cheaper, you're going to be paying a lot more over 30 years because of how interest rates are. So, um, well, we're talking about the pedicabs, right? Yeah. 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 Just like overall, just kind of like what you're doing and kind of how you're using Bitcoin to, yeah, I guess escape the, uh, the fiat system. Well, I'm doing my best. Right. But I'm also like, you said I'm orange pulling people on the pedicab. Like I'm not really doing that, man. I'm really just putting a sign. So I'm really just trying to accumulate as much Bitcoin as I can. Whether you're getting orange pill or not, like I'm not even the person to orange pill you. I, like my knowledge of this is so low compared to people who are really in Bitcoin anyway that I'm not even in a position to be an authoritative source. I'm just sharing a, a, like what I know, which is really basic. Yeah, uh, it's just a basic understanding of how money should work, and it seems as though Bitcoin um, fills that car- fills that criteria, right? But my sign says like. Hey, uh, here are the prices, right? And for South by it's a little bit more inflated. Yeah. But course. so for South by it's like, all right, 15 bucks a person for under a mile, and it's 25 bucks for over a mile per person. But it, and if you pay in Bitcoin, it'll I'll drop it to 10 a person. Yeah. And if you pay in Bitcoin, I'll drop it to 20 a person if you're going far. Yeah. And the sign is right there. And I have my Bitcoin address and I have my Cash App address. And then if people say, hey, do you have Venmo? And I'm like, I guess so, but I'd prefer to use better money. Like I'd prefer these yeah. if you have the, you know? Um, or people say, well, how would you like to be paid? Oh, Bitcoin. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll say, well, why it's lost like 80% of its value. And I'm like, well, yeah, but we could talk. What is, what about the dollar in the past hundred years? You know, do you know what you could have, what you were able to buy with a dollar a hundred years ago? Yeah. Uh, do you know what you were able to buy with a dollar in like 1970? Do you, um, do you trust the U S government and the federal reserve to like look out for your best interests and actually uh, keep your money safe in the event of an emergency? Like when you need it, it, it would just seem like regardless of what the price is, you would want to have some degree of self autonomy over your finances. Bitcoin does that. If you have it in cold storage, like that, that's, that's the gist of it, you know? And then you bring up the truckers, you bring up like people leaving Ukraine, you bring up all this stuff. Right. Um, and They'll say, well, it lost 80%. The, the, the eight, they're like, bro, you yeah, it lost the, the, that. That's the argument I get. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's because of interest rates. Or they'll, or they'll say, well, obviously, it's not an inflation hedge because it lost 80% of its value. And I'm like, well, hold up. It's not an inflation hedge. I never said that. But it's a, it's a debasement hedge. And it actually does uh, correlate with the money supply, right? Like, like the more you increase the money supply, the um, – the more value Bitcoin proposes. When you start decreasing and contracting the money supply, uh, something like Bitcoin goes down. And a lot of people also get into this thing for the wrong reason. Like they buy it because number go up. And well, guess what, dude? If you bought Bitcoin at 40K uh, and you never sold it or you started selling it as everything in panic, you're, you became like a perma bear because of the reason for why you bought it. Like I, I never tell people to buy Bitcoin ever. I tell people to learn about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, dude, you should you should learn about it and put a little bit every day into it, or put a little bit every week, or if you get it, I tell Petty, I the, the, the people I really try to orange. I'm sorry, I'm like go, I'm like monologuing, right? But no, like, that's fine. This is what this is for, man. Um, the people that I try to like talk to about it are really other petty cappers. Like, I don't give a shit about my. I mean, I don't give a shit about my customers, right? Like, I mean, they're cool and I like them. And I want to have a good time, but they're all doing better than I am, right? Or they think they are on paper. They're doing better than me, whatever, right? You know? Yeah. They have better jobs than I do. They're not, you know. If I'm talking about it, it's, it's because like the only reason I'm talking to them about that stuff is because I think they're smarter than me. 
and maybe I can learn something, yeah. right? That could help me in my life going forward. Like I'm not going to just orange pill some guy who I think is an idiot on my petty cam. It's a waste of time, right? The only people I talk about that stuff are with people who like work finance jobs or people who I think would know something about investing and I'll ask them about that and I'll talk about it. But I'm not talking to like some idiot that's trying to go clubbing that's drunk about Bitcoin. I'm just like the sign's there. Yeah. You know, let's put some music on, right? So that, that that's that's the one thing. But like with other petty cabbers, I tell them like, dude, you have to put put your money into Bitcoin, bro. Like when you get a cash app payment, just put it into Bitcoin and leave it there. Cause you know, you, there's a lot of broke petty cabbers. There's a lot of petty cabbers that do really well, but there's a lot of like broke dick energy. <laughs> yeah. Um you know, and there's a lot of people that really just don't understand the stuff that they, they don't want to learn. It's not a, pri- it's, it's just not, it's not a priority. Oh, like that. a lot of it is like, you're getting made fun of when you're trying to talk to them about it. And that's fine because the more I'm getting made fun of, uh, the more I realize that this is in deep value territory. Yeah. So cool. Like that's like that, that. And that's the thing. Like you get to really test by being out there and doing this job. You get to, you know, whether you're in a bear market or, be, or going into a bull market just by how people respond to Bitcoin because people, people talked and responded to Bitcoin a lot. Like in 2021, I was telling people like, hey, man, I, I actually sold I sold my Bitcoin because I made a bunch of money and I want to buy a house and all this stuff or mm-hmm. I want to like invest in something else because I didn't understand it as fully. Yeah. But I also was like following TA guys. I follow this dude called the blockchain backer on Twitter. Yeah. I really like that guy's videos uh, it, like for technical stuff. I was pay attention to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he seemed like he was right about a lot of stuff. So I'm like, oh, if he's saying that it's probably – reaching the top of its 4.236 extension or something like that. Like maybe I should listen to him and take some out. Right. And so I would tell people like in 2021, I was like, Hey man, I took some, some money out. I I took some of my Bitcoin out and sold it. People were like, bro, why'd you sell your Bitcoin? That's so stupid, dude. Why would you do that, man? Are you an idiot? Yeah. And then those same people are telling me that I'm an idiot for buying Bitcoin now. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, it's, it's funny because, like, uh, it, it, that reminds me of, like, the meme, right? I mean, you, you see, like, Bitcoin at 60K and the line's, like, out the door and then Bitcoin at 20K and nobody's in line because, like, exactly like you said, right? I mean, people are always going to try to FOMO in and just kind of look for the number go up. And that's when you can kind of try to maybe have that discussion. But I think at the end of the day, it's, like, r- the thing that I took away from you discussing about orange pilling is – at the end of like you're trying to learn your customer, learn the person you're talking about. And like, all right, like you're not going to waste your fucking time with some guy who's getting drunk and going to sixth street and going to take a bunch of shots. They don't give a fuck, but you're trying to learn, you know, if you have a finance guy, maybe you could learn something from them. Maybe you could have like a little discussion about it and you can kind of help your thesis or like figure out a little bit more about it yourself. Um, whereas like, yeah, I, I mean like, and other petty cabbers, you could help them out too. Right. I mean like by, you well, yeah, dude, like we're we're a community. Struggles. Like when one of us does well, everybody does well, right? Yeah. Like we're we're trying to look out for one another, right? So I, I think that that's important. You know, I try to say, look, bro, buy Bitcoin. Like, hey, they um when they had Bitblock Boom, I helped. I told one dude to get a Moon Wallet. Yeah, I don't know if he got any Bitcoin payments, but, but yeah, like, I mean, hey, Bitblock I would, dude, Boom. So I had a bunch of people from Bitblock Boom in my pedicab, and I probably got like four hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Just and this was when it was seventeen k. I got like four hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin at like 17 K that I just got paid it. Yeah. Right. And so like, just by getting paid in Bitcoin, I got a pretty decent amount. Like I got like a pretty decent amount of Bitcoin just from people paying me in Bitcoin. And like during ACL, I had a couple of like these like wine moms who didn't know what Bitcoin was. And they're like, they were just were like, I don't even, this is useless. This is stupid. I'll get rid of it. Yeah. You know, like I don't even want this thing anyway. Um, I'll, I'll give you like $30 worth of it. I'm like, all right, cool. And she had like dog, the dog coin. And so oh, I'm like, yeah. here, let me help you with that. And I just converted it to Bitcoin for her on Coinbase. And I just sent myself $30 worth of yeah, Bitcoin. So you got some people like that, right? But um, I don't know. Just try to like be out there and, and present value and make the case for it in a way that, you know, somebody who like wears a mask alone in their car would understand. Oh, yeah. um, well, they might be a lost cause as it is. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that, that's, <laughs> that's how you uh, want to try to like explain why this thing is valuable, right? Um, and so, you know, you're doing that, you're doing your part to, to further this. And, you know, generally speaking, if you're making stuff that has value that people want to listen to, eventually you might get, you know, you try to get some sponsorship, you try to get ad deals, you try to like hit people up to like support the podcast you're doing or to like do ad deals on, on the pedicab you're riding. And it's like, well, shit, that's, you know, you might get a few thousand dollars here worth of Bitcoin now at, at these prices. Yeah. That's a big deal. Like I got an ad deal from a, comp- a social media company called Float during ACL, and I got like 
nine hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin for like October to December. Yeah, you know, like that's awesome. When it was like eighteen k, nineteen k, like that's that's great. I don't have to charge like as high of a price because I'm getting better money. Yeah, and then you're more competitive compared to other petty cash. I mean, it's just a never ending cycle, right? Yeah, I mean, like I'm yeah. getting better money. I don't care. Like I'm I'm chill about it. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So if somebody's uh, listening that, uh, you know, maybe wants to take your pedicab because you're a Bitcoiner and kind of help to support the cause, where can they find you? And, uh, yeah, what else Dude, do you got going on? Yeah. So, uh, my Twitter handle is the Alex Stranger. My Instagram is uh showtime, Alex Stranger, A L E X S T R E N G E R. Just DM me on any of these platforms, follow me, share my videos. That'd be really cool. But no, you could totally, t- like, we're still in a bear market right now. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. And you could just tell because people don't even know what Bitcoin is or all them to our, or, um, you know, the first thing I, I get asked is, do you have Venmo? Yeah. Do you have Venmo? And they, and everybody's voluntarily using like the worst payment platform ever. Like, bro, just use strike. At least you strike. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, it, that, that get that gets kind of exasperating is seeing these idiots that you got to like, I'm not even gonna call them idiots, but you see these people that just don't, they don't get it. They don't want to get it. And then they're going to complain about whatever and inequalities and inequities and things that, that, that they're suffering from as a result of that, which it's true, but like you have an opportunity to opt out of this and you're voluntarily choosing not to opt out of it. So that's what the, that is, that that's, that's, that's really kind of where we're at, but yeah. it doesn't matter, dude, just stay humble, stack. Yes. Don't let clown world affect you. Don't buy things on emotion. Um, and if you use better money and you surround yourself with people that are using better money and you know eventually your life gets better you'll eat better food you'll surround yourself with better people you'll have stronger and better communities and like you know th- there's a literal correlation between currency debasement and cultural degradation and there's a equally strong co- correlation between sound money and flourishing and and, and like a, and society is flourishing so um which way western man you figure it out right <laughs> exactly 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 so yeah everybody check him out on twitter and instagram and give him a follow and uh, support the cause yeah whenever you come into austin hit him up and uh get one of those petty cats pay him in bitcoin no I mean, please even, that'd be preferred yeah even if you just buy the big so i mean i don't know there's the argument of do you pay in bitcoin do you not whatever my thing is is if you're gonna pay in whatever it is you know uh dollars uh, why not just buy Bitcoin right before and then just, and just pay it anyway? Know, yeah, what's the problem? Anyway. Like, especially if you have Cash App, you could buy the Bitcoin on Cash App. I mean, granted, you got like use your ID and do all that stuff, right? Yeah. But like, you could just buy it, and I'm giving you a chance to pay me less money. Yeah, it's like, and you could do that instantaneously. Instantane, very. You could do it super quickly. Like, and now there's Lightning and there's all this stuff. So yeah. it's it's, you know, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna get revolutionized. It's gonna change. Like the more you, um, build and develop that stuff, because uh, the more people that use Bitcoin, you know. If everybody started using Bitcoin at once, the transaction speed would take forever. We're not even there from an infrastructure standpoint to, yeah. to do that right now. But um, people are developing a lot of cool things. Everyone's very serious about um, developing the, the oh, infrastructure yeah. to make it so that the transaction speed gets gets quicker and faster. Uh, but either way, like because it's not fully developed yet, anybody with half a brain knows that this <laughs> is the time to stack. Because once that infrastructure gets developed, yo, it's, it's, it's lights out. Oh, 100%. Yep. So uh, on that note, this is going to be the last guest for today. So uh, yeah, be sure to give Alex a follow and uh, everywhere you yeah, just reach out to him and whatnot and help support the cause here. Like and subscribe to this video uh, or give it a retweet if you're listening to it on Twitter. And I'll be at Pleb Lab every single day this week doing some streams. So be sure to pop in, check out Sats Buy on Saturday, the hackathon, and then Friday, yeah, the startup day. So um yeah on that note i think i think i'm done for the day i've been talking for a couple hours here i'm, so. I'm really exciting my day is unfortunately getting started I yeah got, oh yeah I got you tech got bros the- i got tech bros to, to to pedal around i'm like let me yo let me get some of that biden bailout money dog let's go yeah. <laughs> get, get that pp loan in your pocket let me get right? some of that biden bailout money baby come on yeah yeah hit him up yeah and do all that <laughs> stuff out. So Alex, man, thanks for coming in. And uh, yeah, great stuff, man. I look forward to uh, interacting with you with you more this week. I appreciate it. All right, man. Such a good time. Yeah. All right. All right. That's it for me at Green Candle. And uh, yeah, everybody pop into Pleb Lab. Check out the great things that they got going on. And uh, all right. I appreciate you tuning in.